Hi everyone, it's Miss Jaden, and today we're going to be reading a new story, Corduroy Takes a Bow. Our author, does anybody remember what the author is? Our author today is Viola Davis, and this is based on characters created by Dawn Freeman. This is going to be a new book for me, boys and girls, so I'm so excited to read it with you. And this is also part of Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. Okay. It was starting to snow when Lisa and her mother got off the bus in front of a theater. Lisa held corduroy as tight as they walked up the steps. What kind of theater do you think this is? Is it a movie theater? A play theater? Keep that in mind as we're reading and we'll get back to it. She'd never been to a big theater like this before, neither had Corduroy. They had come to see a performance of Mother Goose Rhymes. In the lobby, people were picking up tickets. Ushers handed out programs, a brass chandelier hung from the ceiling that was painted with clouds. Suddenly the lights flickered on and off. That means the play will start in a few minutes. We should find our seats, said Lisa's mother. Lisa held her mother's hand a little tighter and held Corduroy a little closer. Do you see Corduroy? Right there. The usher took their tickets and showed them where to sit. The seats were so soft, said Lisa. She put Corduroy in her lap and looked through the program. Right before the play started, a very tall man sat in front of Lisa. Mommy, Lisa whispered. I can't see. Here, dear, her mother said. We can fold our coats together and you can sit on top of them. When Lisa stood up to sit on the coats, the orchestra started to play and she forgot about Corduroy. He slipped off her lap and fell underneath the seats in front of them. Oh no! Can we make a prediction of what's going to happen? Very good, let's see. Now I can't see anything, said Corduroy. Maybe if I got a little closer to the music, I could see the stage. He peeked down the aisle and saw some stairs. When Corduroy got to the top step, the big red curtain went up and up and up. Corduroy was so startled that he lost his balance and tumbled into the orchestra pit. He took a look around the musicians and thought, this is a really good place to hear the music, but now I can't see the stage at all. Back of the orchestra, there was a tall set of drums. Maybe if I sat there, I could get a better view, he thought. Quietly, he crawled through the orchestra, past feet, between the instrument cases, and around the music stands toward the drums. How did you get back here, little fellow? The driver whispered to Corduroy. You must be a prop for the play. Someone will be looking for you. He put Corduroy up at the ledge behind the drums. There was a chair off to the one side of the behind the curtain. I could see better from here, thought Corduroy. But before he got to the chair, the stagehand tripped on him. Sorry, Bear, said the stagehand. He put the Corduroy on the table with the other props. The table was hard, not like Lisa's soft seat in the theaters. Backstage was very busy. The actors were coming and going, changing costumes and getting their props. One actor almost grabbed Corduroy. I should find a safer thought, he decided, and head between the costumes. This is safe, he thought, but I'll never see anything from here. What do we see? I see a king, a queen, and a jack. It looks like these could be maybe some drummers. Looks like there's a dress. A hat. Alright, let's see what else happens here. There was a tree with a basket and its branches on the wing, off to one side of the stage. 
I'd be able to see from here, Corridor, I thought, and he climbed into the tree and into the basket. Well, thought Corroy, this is more like it. Not too high, not too low, just this is just the right place. He settled in and watched the Mother Goose performance. I love the theater. After a number of different scenes, the manager called out, Final scene, everyone, take your places. The stagehand quickly moved the scenery onto the stage while the actors went to stand in their positions. Suddenly, Corduroy's tree began moving right onto the stage. Then it started to grow. Up and up and up went the tree, the basket, and Corduroy. This is a very tall tree, said Corduroy. He looked down at the stage below. The tall tree made him think of the tall man who was in front of Lisa. Corduroy wondered, how will I ever get to Lisa if I'm on top of this tree? On the stage, Mother Goose started to sing, rock a bye baby on the treetop, when the wind blows the cradle will rock. Off stage, a fan blew the branches off the tree. The cradle began to rock, back and forth, up and down, back and forth, up and down. Corduroy was getting dizzy. He held onto the sides of the cradle as it began to rock faster and faster. Mother Goose kept singing, when the bow breaks, the cradle will fall and crack. The bow did break. And down will come baby, cradle and all. Down, down, down came corduroy, cradle and all. Before corduroy knew what was happening, Mother Goose scooped him up for curtain call. And the audience clapped as the Actors bowed. Corduroy bowed, too. After curtain call, the cast took Corduroy backstage to the dressing room. Who does this bear belong to, they wondered. The usher brought Lisa backstage. Corduroy, there you are. How did you get on stage? I couldn't see and I wanted to get a little closer, said Corduroy. Oh, Corduroy, you certainly got closer. The next day, Lisa made a theater just for Corduroy. He could see everything from a nice, safe spot. The end. What did you think of this story? Did you enjoy it? We'll see you next week. I hope you enjoy the videos.